now going to discuss evolution. Evolution is the theory that species change over time. Variation is the differences in the DNA which lead to evolution. Why does this variation occur? Why are there differences in the DNA? Well, the reason why there are differences in the DNA is because of sexual reproduction. In evolution, they don't refer to it as sexual reproduction. Instead, they call it the recombination of genes. That does make sense because when we're talking about sexual reproduction, we're referring to sperm and egg coming together to form a new organism. We also have the sorting of genes. Sorting of genes refers to meiosis or crossing over. Meiosis is going to be the type of cell division that makes sex cells. So really what we're talking about here is we're talking about the formation of sperm and eggs. But they use a different term called sorting of genes. The final way for you to get variation in your DNA is through mutation. Now we typically think of a mutation as being bad when in fact mutations can be good. Mutations are whenever there's a change in the genetic code. Remember, the genetic code is represented by A, C, D, and G. Even just one letter change could result in a mutation. Some of those mutations are beneficial, other ones are harmful. A mutation can only be passed down if it's in the gamete. Now remember, gametes is a fancy term for sex cell, or a fancy word for sperm and egg. If you look at the diagram below, you'll notice that there actually is variation in this population. Within this population of insects, there are two different colors. One of them is white and the other one is black. A farmer has gone and they've actually sprayed a pesticide. If you look at the first generation, you'll notice that a lot of the white insects were killed off, but the black insects are still present. Not only are they present, but their numbers are increasing. The farmer goes and he sprays his pesticide again. After he sprays his pesticide again, you'll notice that there are very few white insects remaining, but many black. The important thing to note is that this represents a species. The black and the white ones are actually the same species and are able to reproduce. The color difference just represents a variation in their genetic code. The farmer goes again and he sprays the pesticide. When he sprays the pesticide, you'll note that almost all of the white variation have died off. But the black variation must have had a good mutation which enabled them to survive. Now why did they get that mutation? They didn't get the mutation because they needed it. Instead they got that mutation randomly. There was a change in the genetic code probably well before the pesticide was ever sprayed. And then that good trait got passed on to their offspring because that mutation was present inside of their gamete. Natural selection is just further going on this idea of variation. If you look at the picture below, this is showing you an example of natural selection. One example was on the slide before with pesticides. This one's talking about antibiotic resistance. Once again, the white and the gray, which are supposed to be bacteria, represent the same type of bacteria, but just a slightly different variation. They actually are the same species, so even though their genetic code is slightly different. The person's sick, they go and they take an antibiotic. If you look at day two, most or a good number of the white ones have died off, but it looks as though the gray ones are increasing in number. That means that they have a good adaptation. An adaptation is a trait that an organism possesses. Now, if you look at day three, they probably have continued to take their antibiotic. All of the white variation of that bacteria have died off, whereas the gray ones have been able to survive and reproduce, and their numbers are actually increasing. By day four, the only ones that are left are the ones that are resistant. Let's go back to that first picture. That gray one is what we call resistant. That's the term you want to use. Why is it resistant? It's resistant due to a mutation. So something happened to its gene. And then that characteristic that they have was positive, so they were able to survive and reproduce. That's what natural selection is. 
Natural selection is saying that you can survive and pass on your traits. A lot of times you're saying, instead of saying pass on your traits, they're simply just going to write down reproduce. The next thing that you need to know about in terms of evolution is the evolutionary trait. You need to be able to know how to read them. I further went over this on the Beaks of Finches lab as well. If you look at the diagram, it actually shows you where the past and where the present are. They're always going to indicate that, so you're not going to have to guess. Next thing that you'll notice is that there are five organisms on this evolutionary trait. There's also a lot of different branching points. First thing we want to note, which one of these are extinct? Take a second and try to think. Out of A, B, C, D, and E, which one is extinct? If you guessed E, then you were correct. E is extinct. How do we know this? Well, if you look, E didn't make it to present time. Instead, it's in the past, so it most likely died off. It did not have a good adaptation that allowed it to survive. Let's say we're looking at these three organisms, A, B, and C. The question is, which two of those are most closely related? And why do you think that? If you picked B and C, you are correct. If we look here, where the point of intersection is, the point of intersection represents a common ancestor. You might be thinking, it looks like A, B, and C, though, all have a common ancestor. And if you're thinking that, you'd be correct. They do. But that common ancestor is not the most recent. That's actually a distant common ancestor. Whenever we're talking about how closely related two things are, we want to look for the closest point of intersection. The more recent the closer point of intersection is, the more closely related they are. So an evolutionary tree shows the evolutionary relationship. Organisms that do not reach present day are extinct, and that may be due to environmental factors. It's also known as they just don't have a good adaptation to survive. The last idea that we need to go over is competition. Competition was the main idea when we did beaks of finches. Competition says that only one organism can occupy a niche. Remember, a niche is a job or a role that an organism has. So, if two organisms are in the same niche, which is their job, usually for us it's going to be their feeding relationship. If two of them are in the same niche, they will compete for resources. And when they compete, only one of them are going to be able to survive and the other one will die. Now, competition can be eliminated by a number of ways. One way is that organisms that eat the same food might feed at different times of day. Another example would be if two birds want to eat out of the same tree, they actually eat out of different areas of the same tree. That is evolution.